Right now, I'm giving the signal to Pierre Alexandre Ponant. Well, hello, I'm Pierre Alexandre Ponant. I'm, I'm a French economist and futurist. So today I'm going to present you a new kind of society, which is called the resource based economy. Um, this is a very different paradigm, and this was created by Leonardo, uh, a real modern Leonardo da Vinci, whose name is Jack Fresco, who created the Venus Project in the 1970s, and um, which advocates a resource-based economy. So Jack Fresco was really, really a bright mind, and uh, he was a genius engineer. And with his bright mind, he tried to find solutions um, to solve the political problems we have today. And he created a new kind of world, a world we would like, we will, we would want for for tomorrow. So I'm going to present you this concept. Uh, so first of all, uh, I need to address the cause of our problem today. So what makes our life, uh, what do we need to live and what makes our life happy actually? Uh, we need resources. So resources could be food, it could be uh, your accommodation, shelter, it could be also um, some technology. So for example, a simple chair can be technology, a simple ring bell can be technology, it could be also your computer, your phone, it could be um, also the knowledge, the know-how, like to get access to university or to any knowledge. So that's basically what makes our world. And if you don't have any of this, if you don't have the food, if you don't have the accommodation or the capacity to get a doctor, everything, then you can have the problems. So today we're managing every resources with a monetary system, and a capitalist system based on profit, which brings tons of problems, uh, as you know, because we are uh, putting the earth in havoc and also we are destroying all the resources on earth. And a lot of people are suffering from hunger or poverty, or they don't have access to fresh water. And the problem with the current monetary system is that the money is not going uh, where we need it, but where you can make profit. So if you can buy a professional footballer for 200 millions of euros and you can make profit of it, then it will be more interesting to you than to give the money to the 25,000 people that dies from hunger every day in the world. So the monetary system is not able to bring the resources where we need them. Um, and also what we have today is um, a new, uh, an infrastructure that is not well designed. So we're going to begin with the cities uh, in the presentation. So I'm going to share my screen uh, to show you the problems we have today and what are the solutions. So basically, uh, our society today, uh, in our so society today, we are living in cities that are not well designed, you know, uh, with a lot of pollution, a lot of traffic jams, a lot of stress, or uh, you have to work uh, a lot to pay your rent or to even have access to a property in your life, uh, because now it's getting more and more expensive. And not so much nature and this is not the kind of uh, city we would like to to see so jack fresco had an idea to construct better cities so i'm going to show you an example of cities he designed so this is a circular city so why a circular city so you can see you have a lot more nature and a circular city is a way better um, infrastructure because uh, the circular shape is the is the shape that minimizes the distance. So for example, the worst city you could have is a bit like Bilbao along the river. It's a linear city, you know? So for example, if you start your journey from point A, your home, and then you go to your office point B, and then you have to go to the dentist point C, then to go back to your home, it's uh, all the way back you have to make and the distance is the biggest. Um, also, our roads are crossing 
and interlockings like spaghetti, uh, spaghetti, so you know it's not very efficient. So these models, um, like the circular cities, I can show you another one. Uh, is so this one the design I don't like it so much, but don't care about it. You know, it's a bit more about the patterns than the design. We could make something even more beautiful. So Jack Fresco designed these cities in the 1970s to the 1990s, and it's a bit retro futuristic because he died uh, four years ago at age 101. But keep in mind that this is about the model okay not about the design so i'm gonna go back to this design i like more um so in this city you don't need any car actually this is a carless city and you can go from one point to the other in the city in maximum seven minutes by using a, a maglev train or a maglev tramway so that can go at 600 kilometers per hour and in this city you do so you don't need car but also everything is free so this is what is, is uh, this is the thing that is gonna change the political paradigm so how can you make it all free and uh, why most of the jobs will disappear so i'm gonna explain that to you uh in the next um steps so um well to get uh the resources for free you need to to eat so at the um, uh, at the edge of the city, so in the most uh, um, remote uh, circular areas, um, we will have <clears throat> some farms, uh, ecological farms. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little um, what we can do. So this is just a model. We have many things we can do. But the thing is we are going to try to automate the maximum. So we can use biopony, which is a form of organic uh, Hydroponies, so you don't. You just need to put the nutrients into the uh, the soil, and um, you don't need any uh, fertilizer. So it's all organic, and it's very productive. You can also use the robots to help you. And um, so we we calculated that it will be uh, forty times more efficient than the agricultural system uh, we have today, and also. Uh, all organic but you we can also use some more um classical but uh, uh very good uh, uh, alternatives like the permaculture so into the soil uh, so it's not always into um into biopony like you see on, on the picture and the thing is the food is gonna be very very cheap like 30 times cheaper why because it's all made uh, around the city so you don't need to bring uh, your food from another country in Europe like I'm in France and we bring uh, a lot of food from Italy Spain or even uh, remoter areas so everything is made uh, on site so you don't have the cost for that uh, also you don't have the taxes because it will be made um, in a way not to tax it um, also, you don't need the profit because uh, today, so the the companies are making profit, and uh, the sellers and the shops are making profits. But all is made by the nation or by the city for the community. So no need for that. And also, uh, no profit for the traders and the financial markets that uh, uh, make a lot of money on the uh, on the financial markets, uh, selling and reselling. Uh, um the the primary commodities you know so all in all um we calculated and also not so much workers actually because all could be automatized you know so the cost is really 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 cheap so if it's 30 times cheaper instead of eating for i don't know let's let's make it for 300 between 300 and 600 euros of food Per person per month and it could cost only 10 to 20 euros so we will give it for free to, to the people so what about the accommodation so now today we have uh, technologies that are really really great to make very cheap and very high level um, accommodations so uh, so that was uh, I can show you the maglev train I told you about uh, before and so for the accommodation we can have now the 3d printing all the extrusion system 
So with just 3D printing, um, you can make a house in less than 24 hours for a cost of only a few thousand euros. You don't need any worker. And today we can have even have like 10 houses printed by the same 3D printer in less um, than 24 hours. Uh, in Dubai, they did a big building with 3D printing. Uh, it's very recent. And also today, like the device could also uh, put the electrical system or the pipes. So it's not uh, only about the concrete and it's very cheap. So uh, um, the thing is the accommodation will be uh, given for free. Uh, to the people so it's not like a property system it's uh, a bit like a, a disposable system like a bit like Airbnb you no know? but you have your own house for you that you can choose um, with an AI uh, software so you can know if you want uh, some rooms uh, where you want to uh, to have this room compared to the living room and so on so it's uh, um, with AI now you can make very beautiful things um, so this is, for example, a kind of uh, house uh, that Jack designed. And this is an example of what we could have for everybody today, uh, tomorrow in the in our cities. So basically, this is going to be uh, the thing that changes all the world. Uh, oh, also, so I forgot to tell you about it. So in the center of the city, there will be uh, a huge dome with uh, all the um, commodities that you need on a, a day to day basis. But something very, very interesting we have in the central dome is a, a kind of a public library for renting for free objects. So every object you don't need on a daily basis. So for example, if you need a, a lawnmower or a guitar or uh, anything, uh, any device to uh, any device you don't need, like you don't need on a daily basis, but just from time to time, then you can rent it for free. So you can get it, um, you can go to the dome yourself. So in less than five minutes, you, you're you going to be there, or you can even order it on your tablet, and it could be delivered to your door with a, a, a pneumatic uh, pipe that can go very fast for delivering your item, then you use it and uh, you give it back. And it's uh, uh, way better for not wasting resources, you know, because for example, let's take the example of a lawnmower. You have a lawnmower, if you have a garden and you use it only maybe once a month. So it's gonna stay in your garage and you, you don't use it. And it's a waste of resources because it could be useful for somebody, somebody else, but it's not used. So this system is a lot better because you don't uh, uh, waste resources. Also in the today's society, we have something very bad for the envir environment, which is called planned obsolescence. So because of profit making, the companies are trying to sell you uh, the thing that breaks the most easily. So for example, the light bulbs, uh, break approximately after two years, but uh, you can find a light bulb in a um, fireman a place in California and Livermore that has lasted more than 100 years. So uh, they know how to make uh, something that lasts longer, but they try to make it last shorter because they don't want to sell you uh, one light bulb in your life. They want you to buy again and again because they lose their business model, you know, uh, but you can also find it for printers. So now they they put some chips and after a certain um, number of uh, printing, then uh, it's it collapses on purpose or also um, the stockings of women. Now they're making uh, stockings that breaks easily. But before DuPont and more, they could make stockings that could uh, uh, last for one life. You know, they could uh, make it unbreakable or if it, it works for your uh, dishwasher, your car, uh, your phone, your, um, your computer. So now in the computers, they are putting some chips uh, of very low quality and they are putting it in the worst part of the computer with the most heat and it, um, so it rains uh, the, the chip easier and they calculate the time the, 
the your computer will, will last and they make you buy again and again in the resource-based economy there won't be anything like this so we will use only the best material that lasts the longer and every part of the device will be uh, interchangeable you know so you don't have to change all the device at the same time so you can rent the device so no no need to have any device at your home that you don't need you can rent it for free and everything will be made of the best quality so what kind of society we live in because uh, you have everything you need uh, for your comfort okay so with high technology and automation we could have all that and i'm going to show you a small um a small clip about it um so um uh, so we calculated that 97 percent of the jobs will disappear first of all uh, you don't need uh, you don't have any um, uh, you're, you're not compelled to go to your job in the morning because you have everything you need for free so you have the the food you have accommodation you have the automatic transportation system for free uh, you can rent the objects and so on so basically you're not stressed by uh, saying okay how I'm gonna pay my rent or how can I feed my kids if I don't have any work and there is no imperative you know and so we calculated that 97 percent of the current jobs of the capitalist system uh, will disappear most of them will be automatized so i'm gonna show you um a clip that show you the possibilities of automatization artificial intelligence and robots uh, in today and in the future so this is a, a clip of uh, a very nice page uh, uh, called um human versus machine so yeah let's make it bigger so you can see now there are some harvesting system um harvesting system for agriculture there are some robots that can carry the thing robots that can do the masonry the logistics even the tattoos or the needles uh so you see it's a lot more efficient also oh, it's a bit of the same clip uh, again and again <laughs> okay but you you get the concept um so today um a lot of uh, jobs are able to be automatized you know and there was even a study by by mckinsey that showed that by mm, 2030s 30 percent of the jobs uh are doomed to disappear and even more in 2050 they uh expect so it's an estimation you know we never know but uh, 64 percent of the jobs to disappear and it's already a bit the case today you know with uh, a small app on your phone you can do more than 20 uh people uh before and um most of the jobs actually disappeared not because of the political uh, decisions but because of uh, what we call technological unemployment and in the future it's gonna be worse and worse and so what kind of society do we want because if we stay in the current system uh, only a few people will have uh, expert jobs that can't be automatized or people that manage the IA or the robots then they will have all the jobs and all the money and all the other guys with which are not so skilled will be put aside and they won't earn any money so there will be a big discrepancy in the society so we need to find a sol some solutions for that and the resource-based economy is a very very good uh, model for that so what kind of jobs will disappear so all the jobs that are um that people don't like to make and we which will be made a lot better by, by the machine so for example if you're a cashier or a seller so like scanning a code a barcode all day long beep beep i mean yeah we have to be honest it's very boring and today we have some system with some chips and uh, you don't need any cashier or seller and it's to be honest uh, a useless jobs but a lot of jobs will disappear so all the jobs that use only the profit and the financial system like so it could be um bankers traders all the uh, banking uh, uh, 
corporation uh, jobs. It could be insurance jobs. It could be marketing. It could be luxury. It could be uh, accounting. It could be administration. It could be uh, 95. So we think that 95% of the police jobs will disappear because all the problems we have today, most of them are due to um, the allocation, the bad allocation of resources, you know, because and of the wealth discrepancies. But if you have, if you don't have the, this kind of problem anymore, a lot of violence drop, you know, even white collar violence. So we still need a, a police system, but most of it will naturally disappear. And also uh, all the low jobs actually. So uh, most of the judges, lawyers, notaries, and so on will, will disappear. So it's a short list, but uh, uh, so my presentation is short. I, I could tell you more about it. So, but with automation uh, plus um, uh, useless jobs disappearing, most of the jobs uh, will collapse. So what people will do in a resource-based economy? So actually, it's a very uh, a way better life that we, they will have because they can choose the jobs they like. So because people won't work, uh, won't stop to work because people are passionate about doing things, you know, so some people will like to do art, music, writing, making films. Some would like to be doctors, some would like to be engineers, some would like to be sportsmen and so on and so on. Uh, thinking that people won't do anything and stay on the couch watching Netflix uh, uh, all day long is very stupid because people have um, incentive inside themselves to do things they like, so they can uh, they can uh, do some agricultural stuff in their garden. They can uh, teach uh, kids. They, they they like to do things, you know. Um, so, for example, if you take big genius like Einstein, Tesla, or Pasteur. Those guys they didn't make it for money. They did it because they they are passionate about things, you know. Like an astronomer is passionate about uh, studying stars. So if we automate all the uh, painful jobs and we have only passion jobs, then and with the amount of time that you like to work on it, it will be uh, a, um, a way better society, you know. So we calculated that only 3% of the jobs wouldn't be automated. And in this 3%, some of the jobs could be not automated and not a passion, you know. So it could be um, technicians for the train, for example, or it could be um, technician for uh, checking the purity of water. Even if it's, uh, you, you can automate you can automatize, you know, but not 100% or maybe taking care of elder people um, in the end of their lives so or things like that. You can have the robots and for everything or sometimes it could be more costly to make the robots or for the resources or because people, they need, you know, the human feeling. You can't automate everything, but for that we can make a, um, a civil service, you know, uh, for the few hours that we, we need. So for all the commodities you could have for free you could really well work like three hours a week with uh, with you know uh, happiness uh, to help uh, all the society and so as i'm trying to make this presentation short you know uh, uh, i don't dwell on all the details but i think also in a resource-based economy we are trying to save the nature so all the energies will be green energies and we will use a lot uh Undertapped potentials like geothermy, and but also solar uh, power, uh, wind power, uh, tide power, and so on. And we will uh, stop with the fossil fuels. Today, 75% of the pollution is due to the cities. You know, so if we have uh, no plant obsolescence and no car in the cities, then uh, and no, also no uh, products and goods coming from China and the other part of the world. Uh, because everything is produced on site, then you have a, a world with a lot less pollution. So it's a way better world. And so we're trying to respect also the capacity of the earth because the earth is limited in resources. And in the capitalist system, the problem is uh, for profit, we're plundering the, the, the earth, you know. So if you can make profit by cutting all the wood in the Amazonian uh, jungle or uh, in the 
rainforest in Indonesia to make IKEA um, furniture and you can make profit of it, you don't care because as long as you make money, it's not a problem and you're not considering the thing that our world has limited resources. So we will use like uh, AI and cybernetic system to analyze all the resources we have on Earth and to make it um, uh, like a holistic system inspired by the human body. So every resource is needed by a factory, by hospital, by people and so on, will be allotted right on the time at the good moment and not uh, wasting the resources we have. So if we have a shortage, then we have a shortage. We won't use more than the earth capacity. So it's also a word that frees human from labor, uh, slavery by debt and money and making a more passionate and high potential life, but also saving the nature. So all in all, this is um, like a utopia or a, a dream. It could be a very uh, a way better system than what we have today. So as I have to make the presentation short, and uh, I, if you are interested about it, uh, I can recommend you to watch the documentaries on YouTube. We have a lot of views, dozens of millions. So you can check the documentaries the choice is ours or um, paradise or oblivion or even the zeitgeist documentaries which talk about it it's very very interesting we have websites so you can check a resource based or venus project sorry here it is so i hope you enjoyed my presentation and uh, i wish you a good day <laughs>